Hello and welcome to this week's episode of Hashtag Leadership, What's On Your Mind. Remember this month we've got inspirational people that have thrived and, and turned up and showed up in 2020 and, and it's amazing and um, I'm very privileged to have Greg with us today. So Greg, how are you doing? I'm really well, thanks. How are you? Good. So I'll get you to introduce yourself in a second, but Greg was put forward to me and um, I was looking for inspirational people who have thrived in 2020 and he definitely fits into that category, but also morphs between the sports and business interests that I really like talking about as well. So um, Greg, without further ado, um, I'll hit the time. I'll hit the timer. Tell the audience who you are, what you do and a little bit about your background. So I am Greg Bateman. By day, I'm a professional rugby player now with the Newport Gwent Dragons. And by night, I'm what I call myself an entrepreneur. Yeah, I'm, I'm an entrepreneur of uh, in the beer industry. Um, but I've, I've done a few other things and also do a little bit of business consultancy on the side as well. Amazing. Awesome. So it just tells a little bit about the the company that you have. It's People's Captain, isn't it? And tell us a little bit about what it actually is. People's Captain uh, is a craft beer brand uh, named after one of my nicknames, self-proclaimed nicknames. I, I will give you that. Um, and we we launched digitally in November this year. Uh, so there's a, a few things to kind of tick off when I explain about People's Captain, but essentially. In terms of the business itself, it's only really gone live tail end of 2020. But it was very much a hobby before that for two or three years prior. Um, was brewing some beers up in Leicestershire. So I was playing up there at the time, involved in their sort of distribution networks and stuff. And it was very much a hobby. Rugby player makes beer, meet the punters, have a great time. And I met some unbelievable people who I'm still in touch with now, um, to learn how to brew beer, to really get get a handle on exactly what it was I wanted to do. Then I think uh, lockdown came along and I was in the process of being sacked anyway. So had quite a bit of time to think about exactly where I wanted to take it, if I was going to take it anywhere. And I decided that D to C was the way to go. Um, I think COVID probably accelerated that, but I just think the trade environment was pretty unstable before then anyway um, but particularly for smaller brewers to sort of penetrate was a difficult uh, task so I was um, I know you're going to ask me about leadership in a minute and one of the things that sort of always has come back to me in any projects I've done the research I've done with my MBA or any of the good books that I've read is that it's much more about the other people that work with you than it is anything to do with yourself so I just had to, I'd like to think I'm a lot more self-aware now with my own uh, struggles in the past, but I just had to be really honest with myself about what I'm good at and what I'm either not good at or don't have any interest in. What I'm good at is I'm, I'm good at branding. I'm good at marketing. I'm good at the big picture stuff. What I'm not good at is detail, operations, spreadsheets, things that require uh, are so important to how the business functions but it's just not something that my brain is geared for so i approached a couple of guys to um to come and get involved my, my best mate from school is that guy he is a numbers guy he, he's a hedge fund marketer by day so it's pretty important that he adds numbers up correctly uh, and i sort of spoke to him about getting involved and there's a there's a a probably more holistic message to that when we talk about the mental health stuff in a minute but he was he was up for it having tried the first couple of beers and, and was just keen to do something a bit different from um, making the rich richer I guess uh, but we said we needed someone with some real out and out experience in the industry so we approached this this other chap Stu who's who's now um, a co-founder and really we approached him as a consultant and just said look you know how much do you want to charge to consult on this project and he loved it so much that we basically took him on and he joined the joined the um the emotional roller coaster that is people's captain now but when we when we decided to set it up and i appreciate this is a bit of a waffle answer to what you're saying but there's so many different poignant moments is that it was really important to me that people's captain wasn't just going to be flogging cans of beer um although the beers are great i have to say uh 
I really wanted this to be something bigger than just beer. And uh, I mean, I don't know how much you know about me personally, but I was super public with um, some mental health struggles that I'd had a few years ago. And it's been really important to me that from those much darker times in my life is what I'm doing about it now. And I think there's this whole movement in the mental health space to raise awareness. And I think that's super important. But what my concern is, is that what are we going to do about it? We're, we're just all going to find out that we're not as happy as we should be, but then nobody's kind of telling us what we can do about it and how we can get better effectively. So we decided at the heart of People's Captain Limited, we would uh, set up the People's Captain Foundation and we're going to raise a million pound for me positive mental health in the UK, which will basically take people from that awareness stage to action. Um, I could go on and on and on, but I realise that that's been a long answer to your question about what People's Captain is. But there's no, oh, that's amazing though. And and do you know what? I've just scribbled down. I've got somebody else that we were chatting before about introductions, and and there's a definite synergy in a lot of people I can connect you with. So I've just scribbled something down for you. Um, so awesome! Thank you so much for that. So let's do the um, the usual two questions then. In regards to really really quick and simple. When you think about leadership, what what comes to your mind? Whether it's a definition or just a, a short sort of like, what do you think about when you think about leadership? Sure. Well, I think um, I think leadership's changed a lot um over over the years and there's the academic answer in me that that always comes to mind now having as I did my mba and it's frankly a lot of bullshit of you know th this model and that model and whatever but to me the best leaders that i've worked for i've never worked in a corporate environment so it's been in a sporting background and those the best leaders are the ones that care about me as an individual more than just a rugby player and there was a study that was done I don't know 10 years ago or whatever that was who's your favorite director of rugby or coach or whatever across like a load of sports and mm. interestingly it was never the best tactical or physical or you know the, the person that did anything tangibly measurable it was the one that cared about you as a person and I've always, I suppose, carried that with me since thinking about the last, I don't know, 10, 15 years of being involved in professional rugby. And I think when I really think about leadership, um, a couple of good books come to mind. Bob, uh, Bob Iger, the Disney, who's now the chairman, I believe, who was the CEO. And he talks a lot about integrity. So knowing what you're good at and don't be apologetic about what you're not. So remember earlier I was talking about, it's actually a lot to do with the other people that are there. That's leadership is handing over the stuff you can't do. And you can ask anybody at People's Captain, I will not pretend how to know about any of the stuff that I don't know about. I'm very happy to let them do what they need to do. And then I think the other thing that uh, comes to mind in terms of, reference points is the sort of Netflix journey um, and their big thing was about creating freedom and responsibility so they gave people the freedom to solve problems however they saw best whether it was at home in the office or whatever but they had the responsibility to do it in the best way for the company so for them, it made everything so much easier from a decision-making point of view is they just hired brilliant people and gave them a load of really juicy problems and then let them to it and look at them now, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so I think, again, I realize this is a long answer to your question, but there's I don't think you can define leadership in terms of this to me is leadership and this to me is management. And I know there's loads of great memes out there that will show you which one's which and whatever. But I think it's that ability to take people on a journey that, that you've seen and you've envisaged. But I guess the point is, is that what leaders often have that skill of doing is seeing something that other people haven't seen yet. So it's how you articulate and translate that vision to those people that can do the bits that you can't. That's effectively what I would 
describe leadership as. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, there's so many things that I can now link into why we've got you on in regards to your 2020 and obviously your um obviously well read and, and and my big thing is about you've got to take leadership off the page and that's exactly what you were saying you can read all the great books for me it's all about accountability and implementation um, and like you said that includes other people as well um so just staying very personal to you then um the one question we've asked since day one of the podcast is are you aware, whether it's on reflection or you were aware of it at the time, about where your leadership journey started? No, frankly, <laughs> um, because I think I think um, it's something that I've grown into, and I, I probably still now wouldn't describe myself as a leader because I never think about myself like that. Yeah. I'm trying to do something really cool and different in a pretty saturated market um i'm not i'm not trying to reinvent leadership and business structure and do you know what i mean i'm i'm trying to do something creative and i don't think of myself as uh, a leader what i suppose i think of myself as is i'm i'm looking after people and i think the the guys that are part of people's captain now is we've been really conscious of the people we've employed that maybe we could have spent more money and gone and got really professional um, digital marketing guys, for example, because we're D2C, we need digital marketing, right? Mm. Um, but actually we've chosen to go with, with some guy, uh, a couple of girls who super enthusiastic, super talented, young, want to learn loads of really cool stuff and they just need to be backed by someone. Mm. And, so to me, it's much more about investing in our people than it is about thinking I'm a leader, this is where we want to go and I'm going to tell them how to do it. They can work out how they're going to get there and what they need and, and their job and the accountability for them is to let me know how I, can, how I can assist them best because ultimately if I knew what they needed to do, I, I'm not leading them, I'm just telling them what to do, am I? Do you yeah. see what I mean? That's just a small example of, I suppose, I don't, I wouldn't think of myself as, ah, oh, yeah, I decided I was a leader on the day of when we incorporated People's Captain. It's never been like that. It's much more of a, Stu, what do you think about this? Dan, what do you think about that? And it's, it's probably more democratic, I suppose. Awesome. And again, we talk quite a lot about um, culture in, in this regards to successful people on their leadership journey, creating an environment, a culture, and you you alluded to there, it starts on day one. I know we covered that with a few guests last year about your recruitment, your um, communication about what you're going to um, expect, but also empower others. And yeah, I love that. It's fab. So let's talk about 2020. So you've already alluded to loads of things that have sort of shown why I've... Um, got you on here because it's, it's great to have this conversation with you but tell us a little bit about 2020 and how you kind of didn't let you didn't let that identify you 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 kept going you obviously launched um regards to your journey in 2020 in the business goodness me right um how long have we got um, we've got seven minutes left so we've got so we've got a bit of time okay um 2020 started with um just playing rugby at the same club that I'd been at for five years. Then uh, a pandemic hit the world that forced um, rugby players across the world to be involved in conversations with governing bodies, um, with representation groups, with legal teams about trying to, you know, being able to pay our own mortgages. It was then... Um, fairly publicly fired from Leicester, unemployed, moved house, started a business. Um, yeah, it's been pretty busy. But I think the point that we kind of half chatted about before we came on recording was, I think that, that what the opportunities of things like COVID present you is you're not, you're not defined by, oh, well, you know, COVID struck, so everything stops and, and the world has to finish now. What it did was it actually just 
focused me um, and, it, and it just enabled me to really nail down this is exactly how I want to start he was captain this is exactly the type of club that I want to play for if I'm going to carry on playing rugby this is where I want to live this is the type of things that I want to put my energy into because everything else to be honest was so out of control and still is out of control we don't know who we can have around our house for Christmas at the moment so like there's a fair amount of uncertainty in the world at the moment so I think it's that choice of right what can we grab and take control of and that's all I've tried to do now listen I do appreciate that sitting here and I've realized I might sound like a bit of a hypocrite in my own mind because I was just on with the co-founder Stu yesterday and just told him I was really struggling because during the pre-launch of everything we were doing with people's captain it was amazing it was so creative and it was oh we're going to do this we're going to do that and I've got a street artist who's going to do all our graphics and I'm just coming up with this and and it was so creative and amazing we've launched and now it's all very you know do this do that and we're kind of reporting back on things but that's only because we have to catch up with each other like this and we don't get the same kind of energy and, and, and stuff that we were getting prior. So it's, I just I suppose the reason I mentioned that is I don't want anyone to listen to this and be like, oh, well, that's great. You know, well done, lads. You've taken control of 2020 and 2020 hasn't been like that for me because I, I don't think it's been like that at all. I just think that's probably what I've chosen to try and do. And there's definitely been days when that has been the case, but there's, absolutely been just as many days when that hasn't been the case but fortunately those ones where I've chosen to keep driving for something have kind of outweighed the but what's going on you know so where do you think we might be able to um, pick up on some of your background but where do you think that skill set has come from because it's very much a, a similar story across all the um, people that we've had on this month. And I can, uh, I was only chatting yesterday to somebody about this, about the reset button, about we're all human. We all have these ups and downs. And the, the thing that sets aside really effective people that look for the opportunities to drive forward and do something over nothing is that quicker reset button. Um, where do you think that skill set has come from? You mentioned about self-awareness. We were chatting before we came on about, about that. Where do you think that skill set has come from? I think um, it's something that I've had to learn. Um, two, two things is one, when I was in a pretty dark bout of my own mental health, I invested a lot of time in, in counseling because I needed to understand how I actually felt about things. And I don't want to take this too far down the mental health route, but the, I'll mention it for a reason is for the first 18 months of being depressed and anxious, I just thought I was really angry, but nobody when I was a child taught me what emotions I was feeling were what nobody said that feeling that you have now that's actually grief or that feeling is remorse or anger or whatever it is. So I had to do a lot of that hard work because of where I was in sort of emotionally, I suppose. But then I think from a performance angle, you think about my life in high performance, I suppose, I'm very used to performing at a certain level, being reviewed at that level, and having to completely remove emotion if you've played poorly or well, and then move on very quickly to the next thing. So I think in sport, and this is probably the crossover bit that I think you're probably trying to pry out of me, is, uh, <laughs> is it in sport, you don't really have the time to sit on your laurels with it. You kind of take your success and then back that up. And then you you move on from from what's not gone well quickly and I don't think you ever really get the chance to emotionally get too carried away with it and I, I do think that is a problem if I'm honest with you for athletes I don't think that we're trained to cope with that we do have to just park feelings and move on because there's a game next week and we can't be too downhearted but that's got to go somewhere that emotional energy has to go somewhere learned behaviors isn't it that learned block yeah well and you know you're ex-military the and uh, 
you know, don't want to get too deep, but ex war veterans that they were like, we talk about it when we get home, we deal with it when we get home, when they've been in, in battle or whatever. And, you know, this is a tough old thing to do, isn't it? What you guys see, saw out there is way worse than what an athlete's dealing with, you know, oh, we lost a game. Like, it doesn't, it's not life or death, is it? Do you know what I mean? But that has to go somewhere, I think, is that is the point I'm trying to make. So that's probably two answers to your question, I guess, where that skill set's learned from. Awesome. Do you know what? That, that's amazing. We, we've I literally, I've just paused the timer because we've got 10 seconds left. So time flies and, and I love that. And, and, and I'm glad you did. I wasn't really trying for the, the sport link, but I was actually thinking in my head at the end, we will think, well, we've not actually talked about sport in this, but I love that because it was for um, obviously the audience looking for inspiration, motivation for the business side. So um, thank you for bringing the sport link up there as well, because it's one of my big passions. Um, I know we had, we had Rory Underwood on at the end of last year. So um, it's great to always get that crossover of sport and, and business. So thank you so much for your time. Um, guys, if you're listening on your podcast provider, make sure you follow, hit as a review. It really helps the algorithm to send it out to more people. And I would love to hear your um, takeaways from each of these episodes. If you're watching us on the YouTube channel, make sure you hit subscribe and check out the weekly vlogs that started this year. So, Greg, thank you so much for your time. Thank you very much for having me. And I wish you all... Yeah, I wish you all the luck for People's Captain. All the links are going to be in the comments below. And make sure you go and check out um, Greg's social media platforms and get yourself some of that craft beer in you. <laughs> Take Bye. care. See you soon. See you next week. Bye. Bye.